Welcome back to another episode of the Vile Files Going Deeper Edition. I'm Nick, your host, joined by the household. Ali, Amanda, Derek, Genevieve are with us. We have a fantastic episode for you today. The one, the only Jojo Siwa is our guest today. I'm very excited about it. I've gotten to know Jojo recently. Fast friends. What a, just a, a wonderful human being. Um, twin flames in a way I never expected. Yeah. I think you guys might be the new like Snoop Dogg and Martha. I hope so. Yes. Who's like Snoop, Snoop and, who's, and Martha? who's Martha? Yeah. JoJo Snoop. I feel like, yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> well, ironically, I wore a Snoop Dogg t-shirt into the gym this morning. Oh. <laughs> just No fucking I'm just way. saying, like, you know. <laughs> Manifesting that energy, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm probably Martha, right? Yeah. yeah unfortunately. Well, not time unfortunately, I just. Love Martha. I just don't know if I have the street cred that JoJo Siwa has. Martha has street cred. She was in also, prison. I just and saw she a Martha Stewart commercial and she's getting a Snoop tattoo on her. And I could uh, see you getting like in a commercial, getting like a JoJo tattooed uh, on you. I don't know. You, want the you should get a little bow tattooed on your I forehead. I want merch. Yeah, yeah, merch is like soft tattoos. Yeah, I'll wear her you know? merch. I don't know if I'll get her face tattooed. My... You could get a bow tattooed on your forehead. That a would bow. be cute. First face tattoo. <laughs> As like a deep cut. My just forehead. <laughs> yeah. It was It was obviously not a su- legitimate suggestion. It was just an inflammatory. I liked it. I oh support my God. you. As if like a, t- a bow tattoo just anywhere in my body wouldn't be aggressive. <laughs> you could do like a garter bow. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Would you wear a garter at your wedding? Because I'm adamantly against it. Well, I don't. Is it still a thing? I don't. I haven't really been to a wedding in a while where they've done the whole like. Tossing. I can't. It's... Up the leg. Of, yeah. Do we care? I just think it's kind of gross. Why? I don't want to watch that happen. Taylor brought it back. Well, yeah, but again. she's not having someone take it off of her. What did she do? She just wears one during her concert. It's part of her costume for like one of her like leotard boot situations. But she's not having a guy like take she has it a off. She's a garter and... belt on her leg. How do people see it? Because she's, she's literally wearing a bodysuit body and, and tights. And there's a garter belt. Yeah, and boots. Yeah, it's like a leotard, basically. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. But the wedding thing, I think, is different. Like it's throwing like it the... to your guy friends? Ugh. I don't really... I didn't think I knew that that was the thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like really weird. Like, it's like the bride will like sit down on a chair in the center of the dance floor. And then the The groom will will like go go under her dress and like, like a, like a kid under the covers playing space. (laughs) Like we'll be like rummaging around. Sexual space. They make a kid do it. No, no. no, I just. Who else is going to fit under there though? (laughs) The groom. It's like you see his head bobbing. Uh, isn't he supposed to take it off with his teeth? Yeah. People have done that. In front of her parents? <laughs> yeah, in front of everybody. In front of everyone. In front of God. Oof. Yeah, that's oh, oof. That's like <laughs> a foul ball. If there's bases of baseball, like, that's a fucking foul. That's a no for me, dog. Like, it's sexual, but it's not. We're not advancing anywhere. Uh, <sighs> wow. All right, well, what are we getting into before we get to JoJo? Another thing uh, I would like to talk about with weddings is, do we have, like, a good communal, like, dance song as of late like you know i'm talking cha-cha slide ymca cupid shuffle like a song where it's like everybody knows what to do there's a set routine why do we need a new one we haven't had one in so long it's been a drought chicken fried but why do we need it because it is a great equalizer it gets people on the dance floor who are too self-conscious to dance the electric slide doesn't have that umph anymore i it's not that I just she want wants something more. new. I want more. That people can look forward to? Yeah. Because I feel like for a while- Was the Mar- Macarena, did that count? Oh, yeah. I think I so. Do so. people yeah. do that at a wedding? Depends on how old they are. Yeah, or mm-hmm. where you are at. Yeah. YMCA? Do people do that? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> YMCA hits. You want a new yeah. 2023 th- version of some sort of- Because- I- I feel like basic when... white person can't dance. Absolutely. Routine. Yes. That's Cho- a... choreography. Yeah. Because I feel like when TikTok dances were really big, like at first, everyone was like, oh my God, imagine like weddings and everyone's doing a TikTok dance. But most of them are nearly impossible. Very inter- average. How many folk. times have you tried? <laughs> Not many. <laughs> <laughs> never. Actually, never. And, uh, and if I did, I would have been really successful and good. But I think the songs we're talking about are more like bar ba mitzvah songs. Sure, sure. I think as a society, we should, someone should take it upon themselves to think of the next one. Who do you want to take up that mantle? Oh, that's a good question. Like who, well, uh, first I'm curious, what is everyone's like favorite basic routine dance? Cupid shuffle. 
Okay. Probably. It's Which got the most is... it's got the most swag to it. Which one is that? Sing it. Down, down, do you do? Oh. Oh. I like that. Yeah. Derek, Derek, you hate that. Though. I don't like the Cupid stuff. I'm sorry. I'm a too much groove for you. I, I I'm a cha cha slide stand loyalist. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like the cha cha slide is universal. I don't know. Yeah, and it, it it tells you what to do. So it's like you can't get out of sync. Ali, what's your? But so does the Cupid shuffle. They're all the same. Yeah, there's I'm like all... a, a, a like I think a little wrinkle in the Cupid shuffle that's not on the electric slide. But the Macarena, the the intro of Macarena goes hard. But there's no leg work for the Macarena, is there? You pivot. You pivot. Oh, you yeah. Turn. Mm. Some turning. Not... There's a hop. Oh, there's, yeah. yeah. There's a hop. Yeah. 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 Where did you guys learn these dances? Because I learned them in PE. Same. Our teachers oh, taught us really? these dances. I was too old. Yeah, no, I learned them at weddings, mm. I guess. Huh. I learned in PE. Yeah. That's where I learned the cha cha slide. I think maybe, that's where maybe high school dances. I don't know. It we wasn't learned gym the cha cha slide from our second grade teacher's mother in law who was wearing bedazzled jeans and she got up on the stage and she taught it to all of us. Was she a teacher? No. She just arrived. Yes. That's a fun <laughs> mom right there. <laughs> bedazzled that's a jeans. fun mom showing up with bedazzled jeans at the school to be like, let's dance, like, kiddos. It was like almost grandma age because it was our teacher's mother in law. It was oh. like. Oh. She was just, yeah. yeah. Well, please, I want people to get into heated discourse in the comments about yeah. like what is the best line dance. We're like YMCA, Macarena, Cha Cha Slide, Electric Slide, Cupid Shuffle. I just thought of mine. What? The Hoedown Throwdown. Oh, that's yeah. my favorite. Yeah. But you're not going to play that on a wedding. Favorite. I'm not I familiar with the Hoedown Throwdown. You're not familiar with the Hannah most Montana. recent one. I feel like that would be the most. Wow. And that was middle school for well, me. Also, and are we going to talk 50. about Cotton Eye Joe? That's not a. Yes. That that dance? Dance? A dance to it, yeah. There's a very sp- what? what? Is it? Uh, you don't know the Cotton Eye Joe. I dance? also learned in PE. Oh, they didn't teach me that. It's one. like the uh, Cotton Eye Joe is fun because you fast? get to do the lasso motion. Oh, there's a lasso, oh. <laughs> and I think that's that's fun. Oh, yeah, it is fun. People okay. love it. <laughs> they should have a concert where all of those artists just like meet up and just do it like back to back. The audience is exhausted. Audience is Everyone, sweating. <laughs> everyone's so tired, but everyone's having. A blast. I feel like it's like Zumba live. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, did you see that Drake? Um, the Drake bra situation. I saw a video of a girl throwing her bra. I presume that happens at every Drake concert. Yeah. Well, Playboy is ready to sign her. To what? To model. Really? Find that? I. Th- I was. Well, Drake off encouraged it. He was like, "Someone find her." Yeah. In the crowd. Because he like he or takes like- so he the bra is thrown. He looks at the tiny little label by the clip and is like, thirty six G." Someone find this woman. He's, that's what he said? Yes. 36 G. Yes. Yeah. G. Yeah. I didn't even know there was a G. Yeah. yeah. What does it go up to? I, that might be the last. I feel like M. A, B, I feel C, like D, I've Googled e, this before. I mean, you could probably get anything. There's an M. Made. Anyway, so. <laughs> so, yeah. So Playboy has DM'd her asking to work with her in some capacity. So I don't think it was specified, but Playboy's kind of done away with their magazine. They've switched to more of an OnlyFans style business model. Um, what does that mean? So while uh, this woman wasn't very, you know, ready to go for OnlyFans, despite getting asked, something about being asked by Playboy called so, to her. So like Playboy has basically a pay, like they have their own website behind a paywall. Yeah. With like video. Yeah. Where if some other than OnlyFans, you could basically do what you do on OnlyFans behind Playboy and just get the panage of yeah. Playboy? Yeah. I guess the idea. Knowing nothing about this, my thought would be like the idea would it would be a little more like curated, like with OnlyFans, isn't it? Like anyone can kind of sign up and like mm-hmm. it's just like like YouTube, like self publish and see what happens. But like with Playboy, it would be a little more like, are they worthy of Playboy? It would be or yeah, like there's I feel people like there's who still are... a level of like exclusivity, like being a Playboy model. And I'm confused. And and is the is is the draw because Drake gave it attention or it's yes. a size yes. G? Yes. Yeah. B- yes. Well, both. Could be both. Drake, it's like the transitive well, Drake, theorem. It, yeah. Drake the gave chicken it notice. And egg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if A equals B and like, B equals C, A equals it's C. It's not as if Drake saw her. Her changas? The G. The, the, her, the G's. The G's. <laughs> you know, so it was more like Drake's into G's and she just happened to throw her bra. It, it's, it's a bit of a reach. It just feels like. I think what it was was Jake was like, wow, wow, that's a. Large bra size. Sure, yeah. That's no, impressive. It, gee, and then yeah, and sure. then there was like a, a mis, like an a mystique, like an imagination. And I think quality. probably Playboy was like, now people will be intrigued, so we'll have her create content on our platform. 
it's not as exclusive as I thought. There's literally a button on their website that says become a bunny. And when you click it, it says click it. You can become a bunny, earn money, be discovered, attend Playboy parties, connect with creators. It literally sounds like a girl from high school giving you an MLM pitch. Be like, it's so cool. You can earn money. And there's these exclusive parties. It really is a community of like minded people. Top creators earn millions. Playboy used to be such a thing. I know. Yeah. Build my profile. Okay. Allie? Oh, oh, no. okay. <laughs> not on, not on, Nick not on at work. the vile <laughs> No, not on work hours. Um, oh. The thing is, bras are kind of expensive, though. Yeah. Like it's, oh, it's kind to of throw a, up on stage, you yeah. mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Especially, wasn't sure where you're going. I'm sorry. I feel like almost everyone has at least one bra that is, like, all reliable. And, like, it would be devastating to lose. Imagine that maybe she was just like, you know what? She went through her bra drawer and was doing, like, a clean out. And she's like, I'm just going to bring this to the Drake concert. <laughs> yeah, do you think she brought it or she unclipped? Because then she's just at a concert to be loose. Might be my worst nightmare. With, I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> to just, bounce like, around. Don't G's need to be keep. Caged, like, supported. Su- yeah. yeah. <laughs> caged. <laughs> supported. I feel like that's how a bra feels sometimes. You know what I mean? You don't like to be caged always. Yeah, I think she was going through her underwear drawer and was like, I need to get rid of these anyways. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to throw this on stage. You know, in middle school, like on Tumblr, when people would do like the little YN write-ins that were like, I go to a concert. I'm reading a book. I don't even know who this artist is. And then he notices me. Like, this is a real life person. What is this YN? Like, your name. Like, you fill in your name. So it's like, you read it in your imagination. <laughs> so it's like, like soft core erotica? Like, it's like we making Gabriella Montez we porn. <laughs> yeah. I went to an all-girls middle school. You cannot blame me for the anything gifts, I the did. The gifts of like pulling panties down or undoing a bra, you'd watch those like 47 times. They did. Tumblr had some like, some poor. <laughs> <laughs> the One Direction ones were like, my mom sells me to One Direction. <laughs> sells you oh my god well, is it like, He's it writing sold? Is this un- are these girls okay <laughs> but i was reading them so maybe i wasn't There's okay YN. you were getting like <laughs> excited about reading scandalous yeah and they like, were all like they were all like i pull back my hideous <laughs> hair into a ponytail God, I'm so ugly. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, yeah. But that like, was the other side of Tumblr. Like... I size two jeans. Like, oh, God. <laughs> oh my God. This is a real thing. I, cause like, <laughs> let me find one. I feel like, and I don't want to, I don't want to speak for all women. Me personally, like, I, at no point was I like, oh, I'm going to look up porn. But I was looking up fucking Thinspo okay, on the rest Tumblr, of us were. which is very uh, toxic. Thinspo? Oh, my God. It was like the worst. So bad. It's like, it was just like, like. Thigh gap, Tumblr, like. What was the point of that? Why was that such a draw? Everyone wanted a thigh gap. Because I was like, I was yeah. like, nobody, I was like a, a teen girl who was vulnerable. I don't think any <laughs> no, we, teenage boy just... has ever like said to his buddies, you know what I like? A good thigh gap. That's good to know now. Yeah. <laughs> 10 yeah. years, ten too, years late. too late. I don't, maybe. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember having that conversation. That, my ex used to say that a lot. He'd be like, I don't know when the meeting was, when men voted on this stuff, but I was pr- not there I was for not that. There. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, yeah. I don't know what seminar you ladies went to thinking we care. Like a lot of things. But I, yeah, I think maybe the ladies do it for the ladies, I guess. I don't know. I feel like I was made to feel more insecure by other women, not because of what they were saying, just because like I would look at them and Comparison. be like, I wish. Yeah. 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 I, like the boys, they were all hideous. Yeah. And I they think were we all, all knew that. Shorter than us. Yeah. 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 All right. What else we got? Oh, my God. Um, did you see that? Speaking of the hoedown, throwdown and Disney and all these throwbacks, that Raven Simone says that she has psychic visions like her. That's a Raven character. Took the character a little too far. Oh, yeah. She's a psychic. Yeah. Uh, I'm not familiar with Raven. <gasps> other than It was the best. Disney it was a really good show. I was only, like, so I was only made a ra- aware of it since I had Raven on my season. And then that's so Raven was said a lot while filming. But other than that, I was familiar with, like, I know like, the show existed, but what's it about? It's so fun. It's this girl who has psychic visions. And so, like, at, like in act one, she'll get a vision. And then it's like, oh, oh, what's she going to do? How is it going to come to fruition? Should she intervene? Usually she'll, Every like, episode was her getting a vision. Yeah, she'd be like, oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She would, like, look off. She had a very, she was, like, an amazing, she had so much talent. I still has it. Oh, my and, God. And, like, yeah. she would, like, look off into the distance with a very specific look in her eyes, sometimes one eye was like slightly closed. 
Raven Simone carried Disney Channel on her back. I believe in psychics. Puns fucking intended is is something she said. Yes. I truly believe. I believe actual humans have the ability to brain in their brain to tap into energy fields that allow for truth to connect when you know how to translate it correctly. I can walk into a room and it's reading energy and energy in the psychic plane because it's not on a physical material plane. Can I see a picture of this person? Of Raven? Yeah. yeah. And to give Nick context, she was on The View? She was on The View. Mm -hmm. okay. I do have moments where I will just stare and I will see a scene that is happening to me or that is going to happen to me in another dimension and I'm like, yo, this is weird. There will be a time when I'm walking and I'll trip over nothing. Well, that also that happens. Seems separate. So it's called being clumsy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm psychic too then. <laughs> but interesting. Okay. I mean, do we, who who here believes in psychics? Me probably. I don't actively believe in it, but I would hear someone out. I believe <laughs> mediums. What's the difference? Well, mediums are speaking to people who have passed. Oh, Psychics see. sometimes I feel like can dabble into both, but not necessarily mm. always. Yes. We should have you go to a psychic. Why? Because I want to see you like question them. They don't enjoy my company. Oh. I'm not one of those. No way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they don't enjoy very... my company. <laughs> <laughs> it can be very therapeutic for some people. Yeah. Very comforting. Yeah. Because I think it's like we talk and about this. Everyone ha everything happens for a reason, people. Yeah, or like people I who feel that way. just need like an extra push I'm to sorry. closure. You feel everything happens for a reason? I do. Hmm. I think it's like easier to come with, to terms with things if you think Oh, well, yeah, it's a soothing yeah. mechanism. Yeah, and I, I think it's like, you know, how people on the show all the time like call in, especially if it's like with like an ex or something where they just like, they're like, I just need closure. Like, I think sometimes people really like don't feel like closure is something they can achieve on their own. And so to have like an external force mm -hmm. who can be like, even if it is like, yeah, it just takes away your agency, though. You know, if everything happens for a reason, then your choices don't matter. Oh well. And I believe that they do. Well, Ed Sheeran performed impromptu karaoke in Nashville. I think that's fun. If you could see like some singer in your favorite dive bar, who would you want to just see actually just like drink beer and sing karaoke? Oh, not Ed Sheeran. Great question. Uh, why not Ed Sheeran? He's really talented. Yeah, no, I know, but it would just be like a yeah, guy playing a guitar. You want to see oh, Harry? Really I want a performance. Yeah. Mm. You want to see Harry in a like, dive bar? I want Ariana Grande, mm. maybe. I mean, if I got to pick anyone, I'm just like, no disrespect to Ed. I'm just saying, if I got to pick anyone to serenade me, like The Weeknd, Ariana, people who can really hit some crazy notes. And Ed's got a nice voice. You know? That he does. Am I, am I nuts? Why did he do it? Celebrating breaking the attendance record. Yeah, he made a stop at a pub in Nashville um, after he performed in a stadium. Uh, and he was like, when I lived here, this was the spot and it still is. Karaoke caravan and cheap beer. What's not to love? I kind of. But like why it. did he do it? Because he wanted to just go and have like a normal night to celebrate. And yeah, he went to some Ed, karaoke. Ed, out of like all the successful singers, I feel like he feels very normal. And like totally. he wants a normal life and he's able to achieve it in some ways. Okay. Yeah. You know, I feel like also the way he came up on like a singer songwriter circuit, like when I was like privy to that because I had like friends and dated people like it's a really like it's such a grind. And it's I feel like you really have to like develop a love of the craft because of how much like you get very little validation in a lot of ways. And so I feel like Ed Sheeran like never lost that like humility and work ethic. I'm still fixated on Raven Simone thinking she's a psychic. Should we have Raven on to ask? That yeah. would be awesome. Do you think she would? I don't know. She and her wife I... have a podcast. Okay. Well, let's do a little, little swap. swap, -swap. Yeah. That would be great. We can talk more about the visions. Wanna... Yeah. She she wouldn't want me questioning about her psychic abilities. Well, well I but think it depends did... on how you do it. <laughs> <Truly. You know? laughs> That's weird. So you think you're a psychic? <laughs> Tell me about me. <laughs> yeah. When am I going to die? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. She trips over herself. I think that was just one of the examples. I think she, she was saying, one, she can walk into a room and feel things on like emotional and physical planes. Two, she can predict what's going to happen to her. Three, sometimes she'll trip over nothing. Well, like walking into a room, let's say, for example, when someone's having like a bad day, maybe there was drama in the room five minutes earlier, that you can feel that it's energy. It's palpable. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes you a psychic, we'll right? Have to get like, her oh, shit, ask. what's going What's been going on in here? It seems like their mood's down. I think it's that she then like knows, maybe has like insight into what happens next mm. is like the thing that's like the psychic element of it. It's yeah. like not just like reading the room, but like anticipating reading ahead on the room. Reading like ahead. what? Give me an example. Like 
if this she, is okay. So happen. like you come yeah. in, there's a lot of tension, uh huh, and then <laughs> maybe Raven's like, I think someone's gonna storm off. Like I think this person's gonna storm away, and I think a door is gonna slam. I don't know. Maybe that's what she thinks. Do we think it was confusing for her to have her character's name be her real name? Kind of have that character bleed into reality? I mean, you could say the same thing about Miley. But that kind of was... was her. Well, didn't her Miley dad have an alter her dad. ego? Oh, yeah. But her ma- the main character in the show is Miley. I guess. It was like Seinfeld. I feel like there's such a storied history of like people naming characters but after But Jerry himself. played himself. Yeah. And Simone, to Genevieve's point, played herself. It maybe like, maybe she thought, well, if that's Jerry, this is me, <laughs> and I'm a psychic. So, what a bummer though for her if she actually is a psychic. And what I mean by that is like <laughs> yeah. it kind of ruins her credibility <laughs> having been the child actor who played a psychic, because that immediately makes you not believe it. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's almost like okay, like you said, yeah. like yeah. oh sure, someone got a, someone drank the Kool Aid of their own show, but what if she actually? But she said that um, her abilities are led by guides who she's been in tune with since she was seven, which is prior to her, to that. So Raven. No, no, I get it. What I, I'm just saying. What we uh... wait? What? Who like puts a seven year old, drops them off at daycare with some guides? No, no, no. She means no, like spirits. spiritual guides. Oh, uh, okay. like six cents. She was walking around on the playground talking to her guides. Her guides. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a. Different maybe, version of imaginary friends. I don't know. Yeah. She has been famous and successful her whole life. Maybe, maybe it was the guides who guided her to stardom. Stardom. We'll have to ask her when she comes on. I'm yeah. manifesting it. I'm seeing it. I wonder if she knows if she's going to do this show. Or oh. Not. <laughs> oh, she can feel that we're talking about her right yeah. now. Yeah. Oh I no. I would love for her to do this show. What uh, a dream. Yeah, let's try to get her on. Amen. Uh, all right. Well, speaking of child stars, it's time to get to JoJo. Don't forget to send in those questions at AskNick at com for all things texting office hours. Ask Nick. We have an update special for all you update lovers out there. It's available to everyone this time around. I know you guys love those updates. We have a fantastic episode for you tomorrow. If you are starving for more, don't forget that we have Vile Files Plus available to y'all. We have 11 or 12 additional update specials available to you all to consume behind Vile Files Plus. In addition to that, we are breaking down Vanderpump rules. We're doing episode, uh, I think, four through uh, six next week. I think one through three comes out this week. So be sure to check that out. And tonight we have another live episode of Better Date Than Never. What are are we talking about? College coitus. Okay. Wow. That should be inappropriate. Uh, It'll be fun. Uh, So check us out live. Uh, It'll be wacky, wild. Uh, The chats are always going off. There's this whole group of friends. They call themselves Fuck Club. I don't know if you want to be a part of it, but it is entertaining. uh, It seems to be a fun... Is it mostly women? Is it all women in in Fuck Club? I think I'm they have one token sure. guy. They have one token guy. <laughs> right? Okay. It's a girl group with a dude. But so if you're a guy listening, maybe maybe you wanna wanna round out the fuck club. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe you're looking for some other women companions. Anyways, it's a fun chat. Be sure to check us out. 9 p.m. Eastern. Hope to see you all there in the chat. So it'll be fun. All right, let's get to JoJo. Need a break from reality? Reality got you down? Well, cheer up, Buttercup, because Paramount Plus has your great reality escape. Escape into new seasons of the biggest competition shows like Survivor, Big Brother, The Challenge, World Championship, with the boldest personalities from the family Stallone, RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars, and Queen of the Universe, and the wildest drama like Are You the One, plus hundreds of previous seasons, all streaming at your fingertips. See, reality ain't so bad. Your great reality escape is with Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus. Dream now. Luggage. Hey, are you traveling this summer? Maybe you got some uh, plans this fall. Doesn't matter. If you're going to travel, get your luggage from base. That's right. From Shea Mitchell's uh, just blowing up brand. I mean, everywhere I am everywhere I go, I'm seeing more and more base suitcases. Pretty pretty fancy, nice stuff, if I, I might say so myself. Also, their weekender bag. I'm obsessed. Yeah. It's, it fits so much. It's perfectly organized. It's perfectly organized. It is so thoughtfully designed. I love, love, love that it has a zipper 
like at the bottom of mm-hmm. it there's like a zipper pouch it's perfect for putting shoes cosmetics it's very structured so nothing's going to get squished but it just like means that you can pack in a way that's efficient because i feel like summer is all about like the weekend trips and i always feel weird bringing like a full-on suitcase if i'm just going to be away for three nights and so it is truly like the perfect size to pack what you need for a fun and flirty weekend away and it's also just like it looks nice it's it's like good for morale when you're like i'm going on vacation and you get a cute little like suitcase or bag out yeah also do you know how embarrassing it is when you take your suitcase to the airport and it's like over the weight and then you have to open it up and reallocate things the luggage literally has a built-in weight indicator so you can see if it's overweight before you even get there. So smart. Genius. The Bay has over 30,000 five-star reviews, so you just don't have to take our word for it. 30,000 people are obsessed with it, and that's just the people who took the time to fill out a review. Whether you are packing for a quick trip or looking to breeze through the security lines, Base has your personal items covered. Right now, Base is offering our listeners 15% off your first purchase by visiting Base travel.com slash v-i-a-l-l that's b-e-i-s travel.com slash v-i-a-l-l go to base travel.com slash v-i-a-l-l for 15 percent off your first purchase jojo nick welcome thank you uh i I start every one of these uh conversations by asking my guest how their heart is so how is your heart? You know, my heart's actually really happy. That's I good. just got home from a two-week cruise with my best friends and with my parents. I mean, I'm not your best friend. Sorry. <laughs> you are my best friend. But yeah, no, it was my, my heart's full. My heart's full. That's yeah. great. Jojo and I recently got to hang out and we've become, we can't talk about why yet, but we're best friends now. We're yeah. besties. Yeah. We're we're stuck together. Uh, even but, if, even if we didn't want to be, we're stuck. But now. in all seriousness, I have such an admiration for you after Thank getting you. to know you. You uh, you're a really special person. Thank you. Really, Thanks and it, it was no shock to me after getting to know you to understand why y- you are as successful as you are. Thank you. Uh, but I just figured you know, let's get together, and I'd love to get to know you a little bit more. I'm so scared. We're about to do a couch. full deep dive. Let's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you, JoJo Sewell? It says oh, here God. your real name is Joel. Jo- Joni? Joni. Joel Joni. Joni. I like Joni. You like Joni? It's named after my grandma. I like Joel too. Thank How you. did you go from Joel Joni to JoJo? Because it's, it's so my mom liked the name JoJo. And then I'm named mm. after a dancer who my mom loved, and her name is Joelle, and then my grandma's Joni. But they called this Joel, who was the dancer, they called her JoJo. My mom loved that. Um, and then the Jojo technically comes from Joel is spelled J O E L L E and then Joni J O A N I E. That's why um there's two capital J's because it's technically two names put together. That's a great merch. Thank you. You're gonna bring me some and then you forgot. I'm sorry, it's I okay. forgot. I'll bring you some. I'll bring you some. So like, what's what's going on in your life? A lot, so much. It's interesting. I've kind of been going nonstop for the last Jesus twenty years. Christ, yeah, twenty years. <laughs> And in this last two weeks, I took a break and I literally was like, no work. I'm not doing anything related to work. I'm taking two weeks and I'm doing nothing. And now today's literally my first day back. And I'm like, oh, my God, (laughs) we're back to reality. Like even just driving in L.A., I was like, geez, just all feels like work. But yeah, I uh, I have a lot of music happening right now, which is consuming my life. But it's the most magical thing ever. I am getting a new puppy today, which I'm very excited about. Do you know what kind? Can you? Is I this do. breaking news? It's breaking news. Um, no, I'm getting a Bernadoodle, cute little <gasps> puppy Bernadoodle. Great, great dog. Yeah, his name is going to be either. It's either going to be Clyde Juno Siwa or Juno Clyde Siwa. I can't decide what flows better. Is it a? It's male? a boy. I think Clyde. I think Clyde too. It's not my dog. I don't no. want to presume to be naming your dog. But, but Clyde I like too. Clyde. Clyde, yeah. They, both names have big meaning to me. Clyde, obviously, you know what Clyde is. Nobody else gets to know what Clyde is right now. And then Juno is um, this vacation that we just went on was in Juno. Huh. What right. made you want to get a dog? You know, we are a family of dogs. Right now we have two puppies. We recently, we had a puppy um, that we got in like maybe March. And he was, he was a healing puppy. I, I got him after I had gone through an awful breakup. I was just sad, needed something to be happy about. And so we got him. And then about three months after we got him, he um, was attacked by a coyote. Yeah. Literally in our backyard. My dad was as far away as me to you, like right in front of us. It was awful. 
um, and he was a little baby. And so he passed away. And since then, like our our family's had like a little hole missing. We have two dogs now and we had three. Like it's just a little weird. Um, and we were like, all right, let's get another one. We just kind of we waited till we like had like the perfect puppy that was that was like, yeah, that's the one. And this little guy, he's so cute. Oh, my God. Brown, white, fluffy little ball. And he has one eye that's half blue. Really cool. Hmm. Cutie. That's cute. Little Clyde. Yeah, I'm so excited. I'm a, yeah, I loved getting Jeff. You, you'll have to have playdates. Let's do it. What kind of dog do you have? He's like a golden doodle, essentially. A golden doodle? A sen- yeah. Big golden doodle, little? Little guy. He's uh, about 30 pounds. Oh. How big is Clyde going to be? I think about that. We have one golden doodle right now who's like maybe 20 pounds and then one who's like 60. And so they said that he'll get to be like 20, but he's already the same size as our 20 pounder. So we're like, no, nah, there's no way he'll be like 30, 40. Wild. Yeah. So I, I was curious, like, you know, getting to know you, I, before I met you, I certainly knew of you and obviously you're a huge celebrity and you've been a celebrity essentially your whole life. Yeah. And I always find that like, I've always like people who've only been famous I find kind of fascinating and I feel like there's like a perception of like, they're probably not normal, yeah. you know, no, or not warped. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I'm normal per se, but that yeah. being said, you are incredibly down to earth. Thank you. And normal. But I, I'm curious as someone who's had to deal with, you know, you have such an intimate relationship with your fans, but as we know, fans are a blessing and Absolutely. a curse, you know, fans short yep. for fanatic. And it's like, we love fans, but like, you know, every once in a while, it just can be tough. Yeah. What is the thing that you feel like being in the public eye? What, what do you think is one thing that you feel the most misunderstood? Because I feel like, I don't know, my little time in the, in the public yeah. eye. It's, yeah. It's like, it's easy to feel misunderstood, but it's hard to try to articulate that. Yeah. Or, or when you do, you feel like you're complaining or whining or, yeah. but like how, you know, this is a safe space. Yeah. So how do you feel like if- <laughs> Safe space for everybody everyone. on the internet, the <laughs> un- most unsafe space but, that exists. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> this exact room is, these these four people feel safe. But, but. Pre- yeah, but in the sense of like, yeah, we're like, do you, do you, or maybe you don't, maybe you don't struggle with that or maybe- because again, I didn't like, I wasn't like studying Jojo C before I met you, but you know, for someone like myself, I, I can be considered polarizing. I can be, I, I've, you ask 10 different people about me, you might get 10 different right. opinions. Absolutely. It can be frustrating at times. You do your best to try to just not let it get to you. Yep. But, but it does you, at You're some only point. human. I didn't have a, in any way, a bad perception of you when I met you, but having got to know you just it humanized you yeah and it was like what a just wonderful thoughtful caring person thank you you have a bit of snark to you you have a (laughs) sharpness to you i do we live in a world of sound bites you know so how how do you deal with that and and is there a way in which you feel a bit misunderstood yeah i think for me the hardest thing is because i grew up on reality tv Mm -hmm. so i did my first reality show when i was nine and so it really is all that I know. I mean, I had eight years of life before, but like, what do you know as an eight year old? You know what I mean? So I think for me, the hardest thing is like people look at my life as if I'm a character yeah, and if they can throw anything at it, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I'm a human. It never really affected me until I started to get into relationships because then it started to affect another person that I really loved and cared deeply about. And so that got really tricky for me to try to figure out how to balance like okay I'm fine with it I don't give a crap because I know it's I know it's just what it is but the person that I'm with it doesn't have that same feeling especially my first um girlfriend she had nothing to do with the public eye and so getting dragged into it I was very protective of her but it was it was hard because I'd be okay with things but maybe she you know what I mean like that it's it's hard to balance it's it's hard to not immerse them into your life into your life life is a public life so you can only do you can only protect them so much before it's you know because a relationship is all about being equal exactly and i've been lucky like like with my first she was very good about being like the internet doesn't matter but then um somebody else that i dated was it mark (laughs) bond who is who is mark bond tempo Mark Von Tempo is when I was straight. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mark Von Tempo. I wasn't Tempo. sure. I was like, he's a he's a sweetie boy. He um, 
He was a good guy. He, I was, oh God, maybe 17. He was my first official boyfriend. Uh, he was the little brother of like one of my very, very close friends. And they were like, let's set you guys up. And so we started dating. And the shittiest part about this was explaining to him that I was single. Because about two months before him and I met, I was like, I want to mess with the internet. I have a boyfriend. So I told the whole internet that I had a boyfriend, made this running joke. People were asking me to prom. Can't go. My boyfriend won't let me. How does Georgia see you have a boyfriend and I don't? Like, it kind of became like a meme. So then Madison was like, oh, I want to set you up with my little brother, but you you have a boyfriend. And I was like, no, actually, I don't. But now I'm so deep into this pickle that I actually do need a boyfriend to help me get out of this pickle. And so she was like, let me introduce you to Mark. She introduced us. And then Mark was like, yeah, but you have a boyfriend. And I was like, no, I really don't have it's a you, boyfriend. Mark. I was yeah. like, no, literally, we started dating like a week after um, because uh, it was going to be like National Boyfriend's Day or National Girlfriend Day. And I was like, well, want to be my boyfriend? Or he asked, do you want to be my girlfriend? I don't remember who asked, but said yes. We dated for like two months, maybe a month, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, he was sweet. I'm very, I am very happy that I got to have a cute little boyfriend experience. Okay. You know what I mean? Because I don't think What now do you think that taught you? That I'm gay. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. <Check. laughs> I do believe Mark's in a relationship now. He seems super happy. I just scrolled through back through memories of us the other day and was just dying laughing at me being with a boyfriend. I just thought it was hilarious. But he was always really kind to me. Like, we had a lot of fun nights. We would go for drives in the convertible and go to the Christmas drive through parades. It was just like, cute you know what I mean it wasn't so serious it never had to be taken serious we never said I love you like it was just a cute little relationship are you dating now ah I wish no I'm not I'm I'm a single as a Pringle single as a Pringle (laughs) yeah I have interest in a in a in a in a person but I does she know yeah uh, yeah how is it (laughs) Are, are are we what state are we in the flirting stage? How do we how do we meet her? We are in the I I <sighs> Alright, let's rewind. What's your type? Masculine. Okay. I like taller than me. Taller than you, okay. Somebody who is not in the industry. That's tricky. That's I, tricky. It's tricky. It's tough. I've dated industry and I've dated not industry. I have found the middle ground is non industry, but someone who's familiar with said yeah, industry. I like that. Maybe they modeled on the side. Maybe they even dated someone in the industry before to give a yeah. little like preview. But yeah, because yeah. there has to be some level of like, oh, I get this. Yeah, or n- not intimidated by it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's so weird. I do think too, it just is like gonna be the person one day. You know what I mean? Like, I try to not put so such specifics on what I want because I'm just a firm believer in like what's gonna come in my path will come in my path and. Yeah, and also like I mean, I mean, again, you, you're you're younger, but yeah. like, do you have that mentality? You know, being you're twenty. I'm twenty. Yeah. Do you have that mentality of, you know, fuck it, I'm young, I want to date, I want to meet people, but like, whatever, I'm busy, I have a lot going on, or you know, shit. When I was nineteen or twenty, I remember very much being like, I gotta have a girlfriend. I want to. I, yeah. I, I put a lot of value. Yep. And having, having a partner it. and feeling that that was a reflection of my self worth, but. How how do you... It's interesting because I am a lover. Like, I want love. I want to cuddle. I want to kiss. I want to watch movies. I want to go on dates. I want to have fun. Now, the problem is, because of the position that I'm in, because of who I am, my family, my friends are like, you're 20, you're Georgia Siwa. Go out to WeHo. Go find a girl <laughs> for the night. And then you never have to talk to her again. Like, just go do it for a they night. They want to be a fuckboy. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I can't. Like, A, that's not who I am inside like that's I'm a very loyal person I'm a very honest person I'm a very like I either want to be committed or not but then on the flip side of that like also for my career I can't like if if I start talking to somebody and the world finds out about it then immediately the world is like oh yep you are dating that person you're getting married and if you break up you're both shitty humans you know what I mean and so dating and the public eye is very, very hard. And I, uh, I've had two very public relationships and they have caused problems for each other. 
And I kind of realize, like, no matter who I end up er marrying, no matter who I end up dating, they will always be compared now to my exes because it's so public. From a public standpoint? Yeah, it's so public. And, like, so when I was dating my second girlfriend, everyone was comparing us to my first girlfriend and our relationship. And it was very... Very different. Obviously, they're both very different humans, and it, it's tr- it's it's tough. And so I told myself, like, no matter who that next person is, like, I really, I don't know, I want to keep it private. You know, I want to keep it just in home. But then it's like the world wants it even more. So it's like, ugh. Yeah, it's tough. It's so tough dating in the public eye. I've done a lot of stuff in the public eye. I mean, it's been my whole life. I've gone through puberty in the public eye. Like, it's been brutal. I had braces in the public eye. Like all the things like, that you I do hated as a teenager. <laughs> Yeah. And like all of that was like the most public years of my life. And somehow dating takes the cake for the hardest. What was it like to, yeah, I mean, I guess even coming out, you know, was yeah. that, what was that like internal process like? Did you, did, did you struggle with that? Were you, did you have fears of, from an audience standpoint? Because again, fans. Yeah have an expectation of you yep. regardless of what your expectation is of yourself yep. and and that can sometimes feel like it's in conflict yeah how do you how do you deal with that so my coming out personally was quite easy publicly was quite easy and then after i i came out publicly i was like oh shoot what did i just do so basically i uh, had this friend we were very very good friends and then um she was she was gay I knew that. We saw each other a year later, fell in love. I'm going to call it puppy love. You yeah, know what I mean? Sure. I don't I don't think I've really truly been in love love. I don't think I felt love love yet, but that is the strongest love that I've ever felt for sure. Anyways, so I'll say we fell in puppy love and literally that uh, we hung out for a week together. At the end of that week, my mom was like, you really like her, don't you? And I was like, yeah, I do. And my mom was like, do you like her as a friend or as more than a friend? And I was like, more than a friend. And my dad gave me a high five and said, sick, no pregnancy scares. And my mom was like, yeah, I figured. That was literally how I came out to my family. And then That's we cute. drove to the airport yeah. and went home. And uh, then her and I started dating like a week and a half later. Uh, and then to the world, my I told all my friends literally by calling them and playing, I kissed a girl. Everybody knew. Like, it was obvious. Her okay. and I were like a little too close to be just friends. They knew it. Called them all, played, I kissed a girl. It was funny, laughing. Uh, then... To the world, I posted like two days before on my close friend story a picture of me wearing a shirt that said best gay cousin ever. And that was to tell like my like more broad friends that like I don't personally want to FaceTime and call. So they found out on close friend story. And then few, literally two nights later, I was on FaceTime with my girlfriend at the time. And I was like, I think I want to tell the world. I think I want to post this picture publicly. She was like, do it. And I was like, OK. And it was like two in the morning and I literally posted it. Then I woke up the next day and I was like, what did I just do? Because I didn't expect the response. I mean, it was like, you know, when you wake up on your birthday and you have all these texts and the Instagram stories, it was that times 55. Like it was crazy. People I haven't talked to in years reached out, the celebrities that reached out. And it was very overwhelming. It was very, very overwhelming. And I was like, is this the right choice? And I had a lot of people at corporations told me that I made the wrong choice. I shouldn't have come out, that I shouldn't tell my young demographic that I'm gay. Really? Oh, yeah. And um, kind of, uh, what what's the term like? I think it's like blackballed, right? Where they like- Blacklisted? Blacklisted or, yeah, blackballed or, but, you know. Yeah, just... like, like not black male. Shunned. Yeah, they kind of they kind of shunned me from their their corporations in a way. Was that terrifying? No, because <laughs> I. That's the judge I love. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't want to work for a company. I don't want to represent something that doesn't support who I love. You know, if if somebody has a problem with me telling little kids that it's okay to be who you are and love who you want to love and do what you want to do, then we don't need to be friends. We don't need to be, we don't, I, we don't. And like, I did lose a lot of fans. I gained a lot, but I lost a lot. And I always said, if, if somebody doesn't love me because I love a girl, then I don't want them to love me anyways. You know what I mean? No. Yeah. It's been cool. A lot of people will say to me like, oh, I wish I had someone like you when I was younger. I wish I had somebody that, cause I came out when I was 17. So I was, I was still really young and I still am really young, but 17 is even younger. And 
it just was like, this is who I am. I've built my career off of being who I am. I'm not going to hide this. This is the best part about me now. Like, I don't. And I'm, I'm assuming it's also probably been pretty inspiring because I'm assuming there's been a lot of, you know, my sister is, is gay. Yeah. Uh, she hot? She single? Beautiful. She definitely your type. She's not tall, though. How tall is she? She might be an inch taller than you. That's fine. That's fine. Maybe. We could even be the but same she height. Is, as long as she's not like five she's more ma- You know, she's more masculine. How uh, old is she? 20. She's about your age. She's got a girl. I think she's got a girlfriend. Uh, they oh, All the good ones have a girlfriend. I've never. I didn't. You Listen, know, it's funny. I saw her well, text over the phone. Text her right now. I'll be I, like, hey. I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I was like, what? She'd be like, what do you think of JoJo Siwa? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. text her yeah. that. Uh, yeah. She could, you know, but, you know she's, she, she was born as Olivia. Now she she just asked to be called Clark. So now her name is Clark now. And that you know, from she just, you know, it, it represents her. Yeah. In terms of how she feels. Clark. Cute. So let's let's see. Oh if God. she is taken, do you... I, I do not do coming in between relationships. That is not my vibe. I got put in a position where I did I did not come in between a relationship, but to the internet they thought I did. Right, and I, I will her. never, ever, ever yeah, we don't, put myself in that we situation. We don't want we don't no. but you know, like I don't know if it'll last. I <laughs> her, thing. some Nick's people like if I have anything to do with that. <laughs> I also I don't know but Nick wants JoJo and the family real bad. I, I'm pretty sure it's her girlfriend. She can't her girl her friend came up to the lake house and so like stayed over overnight. So I'm assuming it's somewhat serious, but it's relatively. You know, <laughs> well, we'll find out what she thinks of you. We'll find out. Um, yeah, maybe okay. Yeah, anyways, well, I told you that when I got to know you, kind of remind me of of yeah or her a little bit. But I just know Clark, you know, it's like every every young person, you know, I come from a very Catholic family. Yeah. Very traditional. My parents have gotten a lot more progressive, but I think it was, you know, Clark, it's you tough. know, Clark and my parents came on my podcast a while back and kind of talked about that um in terms of what it was like for her to come out and and what at the time felt like for her just a very traditional, very conservative old school family and just yeah. kind of how you know, tough. It, yeah, but it ultimately was a it was a beautiful, yeah. a beautiful thing. But it takes a lot of people like you, Thank you. to kind of give that kind of motive, not motive, I guess, an inspiration and that example. safe place, an example, example of it's okay uh, of how how someone can be proud of who they are and their yep. sexuality and and not and, be afraid of it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a big thing. I think a lot of people are just afraid of it and worried that people are going to look at them differently. And yeah, people are, you know what I mean? And, but some people are going to celebrate you more. Some people are going to dog on you. Sure. And it, it takes a lot. It's not easy to, to walk away from those people that are being mean, but you want to really find the comfort in the people that are just cool with you, celebrate you. Like if I told her her job, it, she's, she's in the Navy reserves and she works on heavy machinery. Hot. Hot. Yeah. Gay. I don't know if she's taller than Very you gay. though. She's kind of short. I dated, I dated uh, for like a week, one little shorty. She was a little shorter than me, one person. Not for you. But then I dated one person that was like four inches taller than me. That was great. Ideal. I'm reading here. Uh Uh-oh. This is not about you, actually. Oh, okay, good. But I'm curious about your opinion. TMZ confirms Ariana Grande is dating dance mom star Kelly Highland. (laughs) She is. (laughs) We're going with it. I thought Ariana Grande was dating the guy from She's dating. Wicked. She was. Married to the realtor. Yes. They are getting a divorce. Now she's dating Kelly Highland. <laughs> but what happened to the guy from Wicked? Isn't he gay? He had a wife. He had no, a wife. You're, you're thinking about Jonathan Bailey. Yeah. They were at Wimbledon. He's gay. We're talking, he's playing, what, Fierro? She was dating the bring, guy bring who was up, playing Jojo. Bach, who was SpongeBob on Broadway. Got it. Wait. Yeah. Like red hair? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She's dating him? But is she dating him or is she dating Kelly Highland? Kelly Highland. <laughs> but TMZ confirms. If TMZ confirms, that's when you know they it kinda, is real. They kind of, you know, I hate to say it, but they... they A reliable source. They're, yeah. An invasive and reliable source. Do yep. you know Kelly well? Oh my God, I cannot believe they're dating. He is so sweet. I, I get, so you know him? I know him. Yeah, he is an angel baby. And I've had interactions with Ari. Um, met her once at a movie theater. She was super kind. Messaged with her a little bit online. Super kind. Know her brother really well. I cannot see them together. Wait, but he kind of looks like her brother. He does kind of look like, like Frankie. A little bit. <laughs> he has Frankie energy. He kind of looks like Frankie. For a while, and he kind of looks like Pete. 
Interesting. Wait, wait, who's but who's Kelly Highland? So Kelly Highland was on Dance Moms. Okay. Which well, is Paige the show and that Brooke's I was on. mom, yeah. right? Paige and Brooke's mom. Yeah. We never so, were on the show I'm together. Confused. Is she dating him or Kelly Highland? <laughs> Ariana Grande, right? She's this... not actually dating Kelly Highland. There's no way. Kelly Highland is married or maybe divorced. I don't know. Has three children. Very straight. Okay, well, not why... to put words in Kelly's mouth. Tweets. You who wrote sh- who put this out? Is this did the Genevieve make this? Yeah. But I see the tweet. TMZ confirms Ariana Grande is dating when it, how... I wouldn't know how that theory <laughs> What's the date here? Yes, yes, yes. I think it was Five just like ago. a funny meme. I think it's just like funny. I don't think it's like... I think people are running with because it's like, who isn't she dating kind of? It would be Oh, my... maybe. Okay. And like that's... Oh, this hilarious. is a parody account. Yes. Okay, oh, Genevieve. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the problem with the world today is yeah. people will believe anything. Okay, she's, she's anything. not dating Kelly Highland. She's dating her brother's lookalike. Mm-hmm. SpongeBob from Broadway. Okay. Bub, bub. All right. Okay. That's such, of all people, Kelly Highland. <laughs> Glad. That is so. I was random. like, well, that's weird. That's yeah, it's like, how is this uh, on front page news? Also. <laughs> oh man! And what? Wait, why does Pete Davidson have to complete fifty hours of community service? <gasps> what did he do? He do? A- after Beverly Hills house, cra- house <gasps> crash. Oh yeah, do you remember he had that high speed crash in Beverly Hills? He, he was like charged huge with reckless accident. driving in June. No. Yeah. Did he like run into a house? 12 hours of traffic school and to appear at a morgue or hospital for educational purposes. Oh my Davidson God. Davidson must also a morgue? pay a morgue? restitution. They're making him go to a morgue? And obey all laws. Because if he LA. doesn't know people could die. He's yeah. got to go to the morgue. <laughs> He's got to see it. This could That's be. It's like brutal. That. It's, this could be you. You know, stay off your phone. I don't That's kind of weird. Stand in this morgue for two hours. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! Okay, a little uncomfortable. Did you hear about the story about uh, a a young lady who's going deaf, and she's going to like as many Harry Styles concerts before she loses her hearing? And it's just like I want to hear the most, you know, beautiful music in the world. What a sweet story! Oh my god! Yeah, that's so sweet. Harry Styles finally ending his world on Uh, his love on tour concludes. Are you a big Harry Styles fan? I um, I'm not like. But, like, I love him. Like, I, I didn't go to any of the shows. He's not my, like, in my top five, but he is, really? like... Who, yeah, I'm more of, like, a, like Lady Gaga, Miley Cyrus, Michael mm-hmm. Jackson, Freddie Mercury. I don't know who that number five is going to be. Is Lady Gaga your number one? Yeah. I do like a Lady Gaga. Yeah. I don't know who that number five would be. Maybe, like, a Prince. Elton. Nope, Prince. nope, Elton. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love and Elton John. I never met Lady Gaga. I saw Elton John. Like from five feet away, I didn't really meet him. Where at? At one of his parties. No, at Golden Globes. Golden Globes. Okay. Yeah. Drake Lee's hotel in a dog mast. What's the craziest way you've ever avoided paparazzi, JoJo? Ooh, craziest way I've ever avoided paparazzi. I tend to not avoid them. I do tend. <laughs> You're if, like, look at me. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, hey, no, I um, I was when I first started talking to this girl. We wanted to keep it on the down low. Clearly did not happen. Paparazzi found us outside of a restaurant. She, I have, I keep like uh, cute little animal pillows in my car and she grabbed one of them and like covered her face with it. And I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> Too late. They already got it while we were walking out. Now you're in the car. Like, just put it down. You're like, silly. <laughs> like into furry play or something? Yeah. yeah. I was like, this is, uh, this is odd. Just relax. We're all going to be fine. I don't know. It's hard for me to avoid that. My car is very obvious that it's my yeah, car. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. Yeah, my car is very obvious that it's my car. Do you have one that's not your face? So I did. Okay. I had, I, I when I got my license, because I didn't get my license until I was 19. So I got my license and then my parents were like, you need a car without your face on if you're going to drive by yourself. I was like, great, cool, let's do it. Bought myself a Lamborghini. My parents were like, great, really not inconspicuous at all. And I was like, <laughs> I know. And they were, I was like, it's white. And they were like, Jojo, normal car. And I was like, it's white. It's plain white. <laughs> and then um, it was funny. Drove that for a while. And then I had this merch collection come out. And I was like, ah, I kind of want to wrap the car with the merch collection on it. To like, the internet gets a kick out of it. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. a lot of people, like someone straight up asked me. They were like, are you a narcissist? Because only a narcissist would put their face on their car. And I was like, God, no. I was like, it's. <laughs> I mean, I. I get the logic, but yeah, no, absolutely. It's very, it, it, but it's like, it's just been a thing that I've done for the internet since I was 15 and it just works and it clicks and people get a kick out of it and I get a kick out of it. And it just is like, it is what it is. And, uh, 
to put it on it, promote the merch, and uh, now it's still there. It's Are cute. you a good driver? Yeah, very good driver. I uh, I believe that. because of my cars, I've had to be super defensive. I bet because people will video and take pictures and swerve into me and swerve out of me, and so to to to, I've never never had any problems. I got one parking ticket. Brutal. That was it. Yeah, yeah. Where do you feel like you found leader qualities? Because you have them. It's obvious. you ooze them. I've gotten to know you. But like, how? Where did? Where did that? Is that always inherent? Did you develop that? Where did you kind of find Thank that um, mentality to you? You. Lo- it's clear that you like to look after people you care about. Yeah. You're. You're. You're not intimidated by anything. It seems like. But yeah. Yeah. Where do you find that? I think my mom. My mom definitely is. That's like that side of me comes from her. Um, when I was really little, I would help her out with dance classes and I would teach the little kids or I would like if it was like the class of five year olds and my mom was like not into it, I would just kind of teach it. But I was only like nine, but I loved it. You know what I mean? And like she would obviously be there, but I would kind of like take over. Like I just I don't know. It just kind of. I've always kind of been like that. Definitely. I get it from my mom. What is a pet peeve of yours? Like, what drives you? Dear Christ, do you want them in alphabetical order? Oh, in top yeah. 10, what do you, what do you want? top five. Top five. Okay. Biggest pet peeve. There's, like, the small ones, like, breathing loudly, chewing noises, slurping a drink, slurping food, food on face. There's, like, those. Boy. Yeah. Then there's, like... I, I, I'm potentially guilty of some of I these. was like, are you <laughs> yeah. sure you're best friends? I don't know if I see this working. Don't let this man have gum. <laughs> I'm a bit of a chomper. Are you a chomper on gum? Yeah. I never, I've never been around. I feel gum. like I can be a loud breather. If I'm being honest, it's a bit of I'm a bit self-conscious. You know? Really? Yeah. Well, I, I had uh, a lot of asthma as a kid. I, I, I was an asthmatic kid. I was a little sick kid. Really? And then I had a deviated septum, not a nose job, an actual. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Septum. What they all say. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I was uh, like as a yeah. kid, I was a bit of a mouth breather. I never noticed uh, it from uh, you. Yeah, I had to work. On Maybe that. you were just the quietest of the mouth and, breathers. <laughs> and I, I'm not like I'm a bit of a messy eater, you know. Yeah, not the messiest though. Maybe that's why I never noticed it. That's true. How do you feel about? Um, well, I also I, I I I do I bite my fingernails. Oh yeah, nail biter. Pretty good. Do you right? bite the skin? I bite no. the skin. No, I have. But how do you feel about people spitting fingernails? <laughs> it is. <laughs> My favorite thing in the I world. I knew. <laughs> It'll uh, make sense one day. It'll make sense one day. All right. What else is a pet peeve of yours? I want to um, complain with JoJo Siwa for 10 minutes. <laughs> I, uh, I, I don't really like it when people like lie when it's unnecessary. I mean, lying is never necessary. But if you don't want to hang out, just say like, hey, look, I don't want to hang out. If you... Are gonna be late. Don't be like, oh, I had traffic. No, girl, you were just ten minutes late. Like it's okay. You know what I mean? I'm with you on that. I don't like lying. Just be straight up. Somebody who doesn't work hard is a very big pet peeve of mine. And somebody who complains about everything, or more specifically, their job, that really drives me crazy. Because at the end of the day, they say like, fall in love with your career, so that way it doesn't feel like work. Fall in love with your job. No one is going to love their job 24-7. You know what I mean? Like, everyone's going to have a good day. Everyone's going to have a bad day. I love my job. There are days, though, where I'm like, ugh. But when it's somebody who is, like, overly complaining about their job, at some point I'm just like, all right, like, we get it. You don't like it. Um, That drives me crazy. I don't like it when I'll be having a conversation with somebody and they just keep, like, turning it into an example about them. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I'm, I'm guilty of this and I'll we, catch myself. We all in it. can do that. We all can do it. And I think sometimes it happens out of excitement. You know what I mean? Like you're like, oh my God, you got a dog. I have a dog. You know what I mean? Like that's fine. But then when it's like a lot, every yeah. single conversation, it's like, I dog, I dog. <laughs> what scares you most about society today? That's a good one. What scares me most? Yeah. If you were to worry about like the state of the world. What's one thing where you're like this or just people or the mentality of people? Honestly, God, I'm probably going to get canceled for saying this and that's all right. I'll take it. How serious people take things. I love that answer. I think the key to like right now we're in a period of, I think survival is based off of the ability to ignore people. Yeah. And I think like we just went through something where we really learned like, 
life is beautiful. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that it's taken very seriously as it should. But sometimes when people get so angry about something that's out of your control, you yeah. gotta, you gotta be able to find peace and like, okay, you know what? I can't do anything about that. So now I have to adjust what I need to on my end to be able to make it work. I think, yeah, we're, we're living in a time where we are focusing so much on things that are outside of our control and we're, we're like wearing yeah. it like a fucking disease yep. and it's, and we're like bogging ourselves down. And yes, it's, it's important it's like, to involve yourself and to care and to, to make care about things that are greater than yourself and be involved. But it's, it's, we've gone beyond that. Yeah. We're now, it's, it's a little extreme now. Yeah. A little extreme. And we're, we're forgetting to connect with people that we yeah. have maybe also different afraid of, of the opinion. power of the yeah. internet. Oh shit. It's yeah. very totally. scary. Like the whole thing that went on, I don't really want to say her name because I don't want to give her attention, but the thing that went on with the fake kidnapping and the, oh, like yeah. that, that to me is something that's like the whole internet like got together to try to help and make a difference. And it was all basically a knock, knock joke. You Do know you what I mean? It's like starving for attention, but it's like one thing like really grasps hold like the the submarine happened and like that was was massive and that was devastating and tragic and then this happened and this was going to be that next like devastating tragic thing and then this was fake you know what i mean so like that scares me of like what are we going to be told is happening that isn't or what are we going to not be told that is happening that we'll be told something else that we focus on something else yeah. though that's you know it's, ah! <laughs> how do you deal with uh because like for me i grown up in a more traditional and conservative household, but also I feel lucky to have left the nest, so to speak, and immersed myself in more progressive, you know, cities and culture cities. And I've expanded my horizons. I feel like as an adult, I've become just generally less ignorant and things like that. And again, I think we live in a time where it's not even a disagreement. It's all good or evil. Yeah. You know, it's like if we, if we don't see eye to eye, it's not like, oh, well, you know, I agree to disagree or yeah. you just, you know, you have different points of view than me. You know, right. it's like you're bad. I'm good. Obviously, someone like yourself, you know, as a gay woman, you have a lot of critics. There's a lot of, you know, bigotry kind of points yep. of views out there. How do you deal with something like that? Because maybe it's just easier for someone like me, straight white guy to to say you know like can't we all just get along but yeah. you know i don't really ever have to deal with hatred or bigotry or things like that it, how do you deal with that and do you agree with that sentiment of it's okay to disagree with people even around maybe even strong topics because yeah you know the tricky thing is like for example religion can be it's just like yep. it might not come from a place of hate it just might come from a place of like this is what my faith teaches me right. and you know it's yep. a how do you deal with stuff like that the best example and the safest example for me is with dance because i feel like if i i, I talk about more serious examples then people will come at me with being like but 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 the best example is dance so dance as a dancer you can get very offended very easily because people will call you a, a athlete and you know, no, I'm an artist. People will call you an artist. No, I'm an athlete. You know what I mean? And so dance technically is not a sport. There's no way to put it into the Olympics because it is an art. It is based, your, your talent in dance is based off of personal preference, personal judgment. You're judged based on opinion, basically, not fact. You know what I mean? But you could say the same thing about figure skating. Exactly. But technically, there's something in figure skating with the triple axle. And so they could break down dance to be like, all right, pirouettes in a line, go. Who's going to do the most? Like there is ways, but then at like a competition, it's all artistry. And so that's where people with dance will be like, well, it's a sport, but is it, is it an art? But is it, you know? And so as a dancer, like I, am I an artist? Sick. Am I an athlete? Sick. I'm very, you know what I mean? Like if somebody said, hey, do you play a sport? I'd go, no, I dance. But some people would say, yeah, I dance. You know what I mean? And mm. so it's like, as that person, I've been a dancer my whole life, I choose to if somebody says, oh, you're a dancer. You, you must be super athletic. Yeah. Oh, you're a dancer. Oh, you're super artistic. Yeah. Dance isn't a sport. It's an art. Yeah. Dance isn't an art. Dance is a sport. You're just also, to be yeah. chill. Yeah, yeah. And so I think as the person who 
is being put in that position like, oh, you're a gay woman. You shouldn't be able to do this. It is up to me now as this person to say, okay, and move on or to fight them. You know, and we, my mom and I have this saying, um, is this the hill I want to die on? You know, is this the hill that I want to fight on? Um, we also have the saying, when they go low, we go lower. So it just depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> just depends on the day, which, uh, which quote we're feeling. But a lot of times, you know, people will put me in that position of being like, you shouldn't come out to your young demographic. Okay, I'm still going to, you know what I mean? And so for me, that's something that's not worth fighting. And I think that, I mean, it obviously can grow to massive levels. But I think at some point, we all just have to take life and be like, all right, look. Somebody died yesterday, somebody's died today, and somebody's going to die tomorrow, and we don't know when it's going to be our last moment. And so I try to live every day, like, not upset about something, not fighting about something, not hangry about something. And I, I think if the whole world could take life and be like, hey, this thing that we have with, that we have one of is so precious and valuable, let's just make peace, you know, and let's learn how to agree to disagree. Where do things stand with uh, Candace Bure? Because that yeah. was, you know, it's massive. It's Can- like a year ago today. Candace too. has some v- obviously some very, very strong points of view. Don't yep. agree with a lot of them. And, you yep. know, at the same time, it seems like she's, you know, just believing in her faith and yeah. God. You know, where do you draw, you know, and so, and then obviously, you know, you came out, you said some things about your experience when you interacted yep. with her. And I just know having talked to her daughter at the time that create a lot of stress uh, on their side of things but yeah. where do things stand now reflecting back now from a year a year later how do you feel about it would you have done anything differently having had a year pass being a year older it's interesting because after everything happened and so for anyone that doesn't know basically i posted a tiktok saying this is the nicest celebrity I've met. This is the funniest celebrity I've ever met. This is a celebrity I want to meet. My celebrity crush, rudest celebrity I ever met. And like you show them super fast. Oh, so it was just kind of in a, it's just in a it funny. wasn't like today I want to throw shade. <laughs> yeah, at, no. Okay, no. I see, it's like I even story know, time post. I didn't even know that. That and completely changed I context. actually was throwing shade on purpose on somebody else. So I, I okay. said celebrity that did me dirty, I think something like that. And I flashed something and I like that was the point. Like that was the point of the TikTok. And that people did not pick up on that, but they picked up on Candace. So people were like, what happened with Candace? It is a it's a very it's a personal experience. I mm-hmm. think some celebrities I've met have been so kind and some have been so not kind. And Candace might have been having a day. It was the premiere of Fuller House. All of the cast was so sweet. Everybody from Bob Saget to Jody Sweden, John Stamos, Dave, everyone was an angel. Andrea, all of them, so sweet. Then I went to go say hi to Candace and took a picture, take a picture with her. And I was like, hey, Candace, can I take a picture with you? She's like, not right now. And I was like, okay, fine, like, no worries. It's like, was sad. I love DJ on the show, but whatever, fine. I was 10 or 11 at the time. And then I walked away from her and went back over to my mom and I turned around and she was taking pictures with other kids. And just as a little kid, that just like stuck with me. You know what I mean? It was just kind of one of those things that if somebody was to ask me that question, that would be my answer. And so I didn't think I didn't think at the time it would be much of it. And obviously the world went into a frenzy. Even when you tell a story right now, it's a completely different perception from what I thought it was. Because I heard it through the Internet. Yeah. Third party. through so then. Yeah. And I was this whole frenzy. And I remember at the time being like, that's not, you know, well, you're really kind of outing her, Jojo, you know, like. Yeah. That's well, that was the problem. Yeah. So then people ran with it. And then all the gay community, all the all the LGBTQ community was like, yeah, get her. <laughs> and sure. all of her fans, all of, I, I mean, I don't know if they have a specific, she has a very religious following. Yeah, you so, know what I mean? And I, there's nothing wrong with the religion. I, I grew up super religious. And uh, I mean, I still have faith. I still believe all yada, yada, yeah, yada. There is a faction of, a, you know, like she's Christian. Yeah. And uh, she has a very Christian audience. Yeah. And I think a lot of times too, like LGBTQ people, Christian people, some of them are great with each other. Other times it is like, let's go to war. You know what I mean? And I think that that's one of those things that we kind of just have to be like, all right, guys, like we're all going to be all right. You know what I mean? We all got one life. Let's just live it, surround ourselves by the people that we love. But so everyone started coming after her. Everyone started coming after me. We were both getting hit. She called me. She was like, can we make peace of this? 
She's like, what went on? She apologized. And I was like, honestly, like, I appreciate that you called. Like, all if you make a post, I'll respond to it. I responded to it, whatever, fine. And then after that, like, dust settled. And so I was like, all right, fine, whatever. She's cool. I just won't speak of her again to the sure. internet. Like, just keep it private. Like, I, I actually had a little bit of like, oh, I shouldn't have posted that. She didn't need that. I didn't need that. Like, sure. Let's learn the lesson for next time. And then, um, I haven't talked about this ever. She uh, did her Christmas press release for her movies. Yeah. And it was, it's fine. And you should do a movie with traditional marriage, with a man to a woman. Um, not that that is what should be traditional marriage, but it is traditional marriage. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of times people are like, that shouldn't be traditional marriage. Anything can be traditional marriage. But... Typically sure. speaking, man to woman marriage is traditional. And it wasn't about that. It wasn't that she wants to do a movie about that. It was that she wants to do a movie about that to put down LGBTQIA and that she was specifically going to make movies that had no representation of LGBTQIA, which is fine. But it's fine if you're doing it because it doesn't, it's just your movie's storyline. It's just, it is what it is. Like, Elf. I don't think Elf yeah. has a gay storyline. Like, not everything needs to be gay, essentially. But when you're doing it out of spite to say that too much is about LGBTQ right now, you guys suck, and I want to make a movie about traditional marriage, and you're not traditional, that got to me a little bit. And I don't remember what her exact press release was and it what she exactly felt said. felt like she was doing it almost to fight against. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And ever since that came out, I was like, it was like the article was like, Candace Cameron says no to gays. Like, it was like, I don't know if that was her quote or if that was TMZ's quote. And we talked about how you can't believe everything you see on the internet. But after that, it gave me a little sense of like, okay, you and her are never going to agree. You and her are never going to be friends. You and her are never going to get along. You and her are never going to, I'm, I'm never gonna be able to change her she's not gonna be able to change me we can both just live life we can both just have fun but uh i i wish she was able to be a little more open a little more accepting i'm okay with calling her out in the way that i did for a while i regretted it but after i found out that article about her not wanting anything to do with lgbtqia that's my people. You know what I mean? I got to stand up for my people. And that's messed up, you know? And so I just kind of, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Give us her quotes. Scroll down a little bit. Oh, oh yeah. 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 This is when she was switching from Hallmark to Great American Family. Yeah. Um, and she was saying that uh, her heart wants to tell stories that have more meaning and purpose and depth behind them. I knew that the people behind Great American Family were Christians and loved the Lord and wanted to promote faith programming and good family entertainment. So that's what I don't like because... As if, it, if it's the other is bad. Why is LGBTQIA yeah. not allowed to be good, loving, Christian? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can be gay and you can look up to the Lord. Why not? You know? Totally. And so that's where it's like, homegirl, just go make your movie. <laughs> Did you know that your temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality? If you wake up too hot or too cold, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets inspired by NASA. That's incredible. Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. It's like almost like too good to be true, but in fact, it is true. Those wacky scientists at NASA are coming up with some amazing sheets. Did you know that traditional bed sheets can harbor more bacteria than a toilet seat? Yuck. Oh. No, seriously, I put the miracle sheets on my bed and first off, have you ever put on a fitted sheet and gone on the wrong side and it's so frustrating because you don't know which is the longer one and which is the shorter one? There yeah. is a tag on it that literally says <sighs> this that. is the bottom so I know exactly how to make my bed and I'm a hot sleeper and I don't like waking up like sweaty and nasty and I stayed perfectly cool. I barely moved throughout the night. I was not tossing and turning. And I will say, Kiki, always thrilled to wake up in the morning, always excited to get out of bed. I lifted up the sheets. She did not move. She wanted to stay in there. <laughs> well, go to trymiracle.com slash V-I-A-L-L to try Miracle Made Sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, 
If you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use promo code V-I-A-L-L at checkout, you'll get three free tiles and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash V-I-A-L-L and use code V-I-A-L-L to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash V-I-A-L-L to treat yourself today. Thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring this episode. I have a question as I feel like something that's really contested is kind of like with the modern age and internet, like parents and mom influencers specifically, yeah. like posting their children. And like, there's this larger question of like, to what extent do you do kids have a right to privacy? And yep. as someone who's had such a public life, yeah. like what would you say are your kind of like guiding ethics that you would give for parents in what they choose to like publicize with their kids? That's such a good question because I have some friends that I'm like, yes, your kids should be on the Internet. Like it works. They understand it like and they're little. They're five. But it just it works. You know what I mean? And then I have some other friends that are like, oh, take your kids off the internet, please. <laughs> like they're, 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 they're not into it. They don't like it. It's not happening. You know what I mean? Like it's so hard and it, it really is based off of the kid. You know, I'm in a way not, I mean, I'm not, I'm not guilty of it. Uh, there's nothing to be guilty of, but I have a girl group. And so I have, uh, five kids that are aged 11 to 13, who of course are very public. And in a way, I feel like their older sister. I mean, I'm not their mom. I don't feel like their mom, but I feel like their older sister. And when we were creating the girl group, there was a few kids that I was like, that kid won't be able to handle what will come with it. But these five kids are made for it. You know what I mean? And so I do think it's on a kid by kid basis. I think you have to listen to your kid and give them out because once you're deep into the internet, your kid's not going to say like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. Maybe they will, but think sometimes you have to give your kid the option of like, hey, are you still happy? Like my mom did that for me. She sent me to third grade normal school and she was like, just so that way you can say you tried normal school. Did not. It was not the vibe. But I'm grateful that she did that because then I knew that like I had that chance. I didn't like it, but it's it's tough. And we're the first generation of it. You know what I mean? Like we don't. We don't know what the aftermath of the kids that have grown up on the internet are going to be. They're going to sue their parents. Or. I think like 15 years from now, you're going to get a lot of parents. That are. A lot of kids. Yeah. Are going to be. Well, what's also hard is there's no industry regulations for the internet yet. And I think there will be. YouTube kind of started to create some as I was doing YouTube. I was a kid YouTuber, but I was doing it all myself. I was filming, editing, creating all of it myself. And so there was no one behind me running it, making me do it, whatever. But then there was some other kid YouTubers that were younger that physically couldn't be doing that stuff. I mean, it, the, the examples were me and I was, I think, 15 at the time and uh, Ryan Toy Review, who I think was six or seven at the time. Two very different examples, but they were like, uh oh, you're kid YouTubers and we don't have laws for you. You can't post anymore. You can't make money anymore. You can't do ads anymore. And so everything came crashing down for us on YouTube. Uh, and we figured it out, got it kind of, but like when you work as a kid in the industry, there's school that you have to do. There's welfare workers. There's a Coogan account where 15% of every penny you make has to go into this account. And with YouTube, it's like, here's your check parents. You know what I mean? And so that's going to be interesting. I think in like 10 years, there'll be some better laws for kids on the internet. But it's just like, how do you, how do you, you regulate, regulate like self-publishing? Yeah. But I mean... My mom always says, when you're in the hospital and somebody hands you your baby or wherever you are that you may give birth and somebody hands you your baby, that is your baby. And you get to do what you want with that baby. That is your child to raise. That is your prized possession. So I think as a mom on the internet, you know, you're going to get a lot of opinions from left and right about what you should do, what you shouldn't do, what you should post, what you shouldn't post, what you should show, what you should hide. And that is, that is your choice to make. You're the bomb, you know, but... Yeah, we don't know what's going to happen in 18 years. Do you feel like um, having grown up in the spotlight they, that you missed out on some stuff that the average kid got to do? You know, I just talked about this ye two days ago to my parents and my best friends. I was telling them because my dad was like, everyone in life has one deep, dark desire that would make them so much happier. And so we were like, all right, what is everybody's? And for me, I've had my same career since I was nine. 
So I like, what was your first job that you ever had? Well, in like corporate America, I was at McDonald's, but the first time I made money was um, for, it's like a story my parents always tell, but it was na- our neighbors, they were remodeling and I would just, I would, I was like eight or nine and I like one day like knocked on our door, you know, because we didn't grow up with a ton of money and I was just like, hey, can you like, can I like do some work and you guys can hire me? So like they took their floor, they re- took their floor off and I was, I were, they tell the story like I was. I always had a good work ethic, yeah. but I was on my hands and knees for hours oh. just scraping oh. this like old floor, just going. And I got like, you know, it was like two bucks an hour at the time. And yeah. I remember the next day I couldn't like move my hands. I was so sore, but that was the first like dollar so I ever that's, made. Yeah. That's a great example because you were, you were nine, just say, or eight. Yeah, I was pretty young. That's, so picture, you're still at that neighbor's house, still doing construction on it. You never went to McDonald's. You never did Bachelor. You never did whatever else you've done in your career. You've never wrote your book. You never changed it up a little bit. That's where I've been. And I only have realized that as I've gotten older, I've been with my same job. I mean, of course, I've done different jobs within my job, but I've been with my same career since I was sure, nine. Yeah. And so it's, I've never had, like, I told my parents, I was like, I never got the chance to work on a cruise ship or work at McDonald's or work at uh, iFly or work at a laser tag joint. Like I never, never had the chance to do that and branch out. And so I, I realized as I'm older that I missed out on some of that, but. Well, Lana Del Rey was seen working at a Waffle House in Alabama. Oh my God, maybe I'll go there. Maybe you could yeah? just like, I'm sure we could set it up where it's Pop just like the Waffle House? Target for a day. Where, where would you, if you could like work anywhere for a day, kind of blue collar, Yep. Or maybe it doesn't even have to be blue collar, but where would I you? Fly. I'd be an indoor skydiving instructor. Uh, yeah. Okay, yep. that okay. Indoor skydiving instructor. For sure. When are we going? Whenever you want. Great. Yeah. I can't wait. What was your coolest celebrity moment of like getting to meet a celebrity? Probably Elton or Miley. Elton John or Miley Cyrus. Is there a celebrity out there that you would like to meet? Do you have a celebrity crush? And it doesn't have to be necessarily like sexual. It could yeah. just be like, I'm, I, I've. Brad Pitt's a celebrity crush of, of mine. Yeah. I um, Oddly, I find celebrity men more attractive. And I think because it's just so unrealistic. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think like Zac Efron is like a like cute man. You know what I mean? Zac but I, Harry Styles is a cute man. Like, I don't have any like actual feeling towards them. So I think that's why I'm like, yeah, the celebrity crush. But I mean, of course, it's like Zendaya. Jenna Dewan. Oh, so hot. Like, would you go on a date with them? Well, wait, I don't know. Jenna, no. Um, Zendaya, yeah. Yeah. Billie Eilish, oh, tomorrow, set me up, please. Okay. Um, Now, Jenna's, Jenna was my gay awakening. And so Jenna knows how I feel about her. Jenna and I have talked a lot. She's become a good friend. Like, she's, yeah. That was like your... I'm yeah. into chicks. Yeah. Gonna, okay. Yeah. She, I don't um, think you watch her lip sync battle and not that, feel that way. Yep. Yeah. That's what it was. <laughs> She's a beautiful person for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it was. And uh, oh my God. So, so magical. Yeah. What did you ask me before? Celebrity crush or something before that question? We did Coolest Encounter, but oh, you oh, someone you'd encounter. love to meet. Uh, Elton. Yeah. Someone you'd oh, love someone to meet. Someone I'd love to meet. There it was. Uh, Lady Gaga. Mm. For sure. Dinner with Lady Gaga. Oh, uh, count me in. I feel like you can make this happen. You know, we, um, we have the same choreographer. So Richie Jackson is both of our choreographers and we have been rehearsing. There's this awesome rehearsal studio here that everyone rehearses at. Literally one day it was me in one room, Miley Cyrus in that room, Megan Trainer, Justin Bieber, Gaga, Kanye West. That was the order of the rooms. Oh my God. Um, yeah, it's crazy. And so the days Gaga. that me and Gaga are there, Richie literally will run back and forth between the two of our rehearsals. And you didn't like pop in and say hello? I'm waiting for like the like proper invite. Okay. Does Richie know? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. He's also, like, they've talked about me together. Okay. And, like, she said, like, next time we're here, like, tell her to come. And I'm just, I'm just like, nah, it's got to be, like, natural. I'm not showing up, like, fangirl vibes, even though that's what I'll be. Okay. Wait, so Ariana Grande is shifting, sorry. <laughs> uh, Not Ariana Grande. Ar- Ariana Maddox, <laughs> Tom's ex, is on Love Island? She did a little guest appearance. Do you watch reality TV at all? Being not a reality really. TV no, superstar yourself? Not really. Okay. I um I like Grey's Anatomy a lot. And are, I like like old school Disney shows. Were you familiar with are you familiar with Scandaval at all? Scandaval, only what's on TikTok. Scandaval's a liar. <laughs> Scandaval's a liar. <laughs> um, no, that's all I know about it. Um, yeah. 
I got nothing. Anyway, yeah, Ariana, she's on uh, Love Island. Love Island. Yeah. She flew all the way to Fiji just to what, make it up. She's not dating, I'm assuming. No, she. I saw her little bit. She was like strutting. She was like a hot new bombshell in the villa. It's me. And then she's like, I got a text. Like she was doing all like the like gotcha. quintessential phrases. I know phrases. she's a big fan of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Are you familiar with the scandal? Oh, I am. Very. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I'm deep. Deep in. Yeah. <laughs> Is there an internet story that you got insanely captivated by and super invested in? Definitely the submarine. Mm. I knew everything about the remote controller, the ocean gate, the CEO, the people on board. I knew everything about the submarine. Could be an ocean explorer at this rate. What else do I get involved? There's a lot of really niche lesbian drama. Like the LA, the Fletcher concert. <laughs> How much you talking about there? What are you talking about? <laughs> I was talking about like like the LA, like you know, like the Queer Field Day folks who and organizers like that kind of like TikTok lesbian LA group. Oh, I wish it was the LA one, not the St. Pete, Florida one, and Tampa, Florida one. And what's the Fletcher s- concert drama? Oh my God! So we're at this Fletcher concert. So okay. Oh my God! I'm gonna break down Lesbia in one minute. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> Lesbia, okay? Lesbia. There's like these like five to ten lesbians that are in Lesbia. So there's, there's, uh, you know, what? I'm just going to talk super openly about this. I'm going to use names. I'm going to make it really obvious because it's really confusing. And anybody who is in the 5% niche group that knows about this will really appreciate it. So there's this lesbian TikTok. Her name is Kales. She is the TMZ of lesbian TikTok. Okay. Kales looks scary like my ex, um, Kylie. So Kales uh, made this TikTok being like, haha, I'm the product of Jojo and Kylie. This is funny. That's how we got introduced to Kales. Okay, then Kales became lesbian drama influencer. Then me and Kylie break up. Okay, fine, whatever. She predicted our breakup three days before we broke up. How she did it, don't know it. Got into all the drama on that, yada, yada, yada. Then Kylie and I get back together. She posts that Kylie and I get back together. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, there are now new characters. There's Jojo and Kylie. There's Avery and Sophia. There's Alyssa and some other girl. There's, um, oh, I can't think of what her ex's name was. Doesn't matter. There's, um... Yeah, missing people. But we'll just focus on that group because the other people. Then there's like Kayla and Dallas. And... There's an uh, 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 Anna in there somewhere. There's uh, not not Anna Shulmate. She's great. Love her. Um, Anna, uh, I can't think of her. It doesn't matter. Okay. Jojo and Kylie break up. Avery and Sophia break up. Jojo and Avery get together. Sophia and Alyssa get together. It's like, it is just like messy. Okay. It's all a hot mess. The internet loves it. They adore it. They hate it. Then Avery and Jojo break up. Sophia and Alyssa break up. Sophia gets with Anna Shulme with her f- precious now. Alyssa gets with I, I. I think I think she's with Renee. I don't. I'm not close to either of them, so I don't really know. But judging off the internet, I think that's who she's with now. It's just such a hot mess express, and so so that I'm very deep invested in. It's it's called Lestopia. It's very complicated and very messy. I need a flowchart. I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, we I should... want one of those boards with like people okay, have made people them. Will... Yeah, like no, real... people have made them. Well, speaking of relationships, it's time for texting office hours, Jojo. Ooh, and we're gonna help someone. Let's do it with some relationship advice. Which you, being wise beyond your years, I have no doubt you'll offer some Honestly, great advice. Honestly, I give really good advice. I just can't take my own. I give really great relationship advice because from an you outsider's should. perspective, I can see it. I can tell you. But um, in my in my world, I don't you'll know. fit right in. It, yeah, because you're not you're de- you're detached emotionally that, from the whatever. problem, and your ego is not involved in that, other people's that. And you don't care about you validation and all these other things. So away we go. Let's do it. How's it going? Hi, good. I'm Michelle. I'm 32, and I'm trying to decide if I should shoot my shot with someone that ghosted me two years ago. Okay. And, yes. And, and your <laughs> uh, case closed. <laughs> um, you write after that, which I know sounds crazy, a little crazy. A little bit. Yep. <laughs> so you pitch us. You're in a sales presentation, okay. and you're selling us on the us on the idea of reaching back out to the person who goes to you knowing obviously you know that i just off that statement alone would i don't think it's a great idea but uh, yeah <laughs> i want to hear your pitch i want to hear your pitch 
Okay. So two summers ago, we matched on a dating app. And after we exchanged a couple messages, I learned that he actually doesn't live in my city, but lives about two hours away in a really small town where my sister does. And so distance wouldn't be my first choice. But since it's a place I go like minimum once a month anyways, and I wasn't having much luck in my own town, I was like, why not? Let's just give it a shot and see what happens. And so communication was good from the get go. Like we seemed to hit it off and have a lot in common. We met up a couple of times and had a couple like really good dates. And then one weekend he came to stay with me for the night and like all went well there. We had a great time when he left, like no weird feelings or red flags, so to speak. But then the next week, just in our communication, I felt like there was a shift with him and that maybe he like wasn't as interested or like trying to keep his options open. Did you guys hook um, up? Just like we did. Okay. Yeah. So we and did hook up. A week after you guys um, hooked up, his tone changed. Yeah. So like oh. right after he left, like once he got back to his town, it was like it just seemed a little bit different. Like he was still really consistent with communication and like initiating and stuff, but it just seemed like he wasn't like maybe as excited. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like when he came to visit, it was during a time where I already had a visit planned back to his and my sister's city within the next like week or so. And so before he came up and we like wanted to see each other when I was going to go see my sister, we we're like, yeah, we'll make plans. After he left, he said that his work schedule changed, which it often did like in his line of work, his schedule is not super consistent. And so I was like, okay, like the timing of that seems a little suspicious to where like now he'd be busy when I'm coming into town, but like he still was like initiating conversation. And so after like a week of just not being super sure, I thought like he said something to kind of give me a segue to ask if he was still interested. And like, I should have called him with this. Like I probably shouldn't have done it over text. Like that was problem number one. But when I saw it, I was like, it just kind of seems like maybe it's more of like a friend vibe since you've been here. Like he thought I was essentially friend zoning him. And he was like, that's not my intention. Like, I don't see it that way. Like, wasn't trying to come across as just being friends. And I was like, okay, I just like, wasn't sure. Like, I feel like our communication's a little bit different. So I just wasn't sure like where your head was at. And he at first seemed like really receptive to my conversation and was like, well, I've never done long distance. Have you like, this is just harder for me. I'm used to like dating someone locally. And I was like, no, like it's different for me too. And he said, yeah, like it's just hard when we basically only text and like don't see each other that often. And I was like, yeah, like that makes sense. And he was like, I just need to be like more careful about what I'm saying to make you think that. And so I was like, okay, like we're on the same page. Maybe he just like didn't realize that like he was coming across different since he came to visit. But then the last like text he sent me was like, well, I'm glad I'm cutting off the friend vibe though. That's really cool. And I was like, I'm not trying to say that like, I look at you as a friend, like I'm definitely interested. It's not like what I meant to say. Like, I do still want to see where this goes. I just wasn't sure like where your head was at. Like, I'm sorry if it came across like incorrectly. And then he basically just stopped answering from there. And I was like, kind of surprised by it just because I feel like our communication like up until this point like was so consistent and we talked about things like beyond surface level. And so like the next day, I still didn't hear from him. And I was like, maybe he just needs time to like cool off or whatever. And so a couple of days later, I was like, still really weird to not hear from him. So I just tried like one more time. And I was like, hey, again, really sorry for like any miscommunication. But like, I am excited about you and like, want to see where this goes. Can we please talk about it? And he never answered. And so at that point, I was like, okay, I'm done with it. Like going to wash my hands of it. Like he's clearly not interested and like not able to at least like have a mature exit. And so a couple months go by and then he started like liking my like Instagram post again. And I was like, okay, that's not really like a solid effort here. So I just kind of ignored it. It's not, it's not and an then effort. When I was zero effort. I know. <laughs> I love how real you no. are. And so then I was in his city, like visiting my sister and I posted that I was at this like really popular, like brewery spot in town. And he responded to that story and was like, oh, make sure you try, you know, X beer, or whatever he recommended. And I still was like, that's a really weak attempt to try and like come back in and open communication when you just ghosted me like a couple months ago. So I never answered it. Um, I just left it on red and then like, Shortly thereafter, I removed him from my Instagram follower list. I unfollowed him as well. Like I got into a relationship 
almost like I don't need all these like failed hinge and bumble matches like on my follower list. So I cleaned that up, didn't really think about him any further. Once that new relationship had ended, I kind of like took a break from dating from there, redownloaded the apps. And that was probably like a year after I got that DM slide from him. And I saw his profile again. And I was like, okay, like a year, year and a half later, like he's still single. Like, I don't know, seeing him again and like seeing that his profile was still out there and like seemingly still single. I'm just wondering if maybe like now, two years later, like could someone mature enough to maybe make it worth it to have another shot or like, would he still be the same? It was just like, he was someone I was like excited about because all other things considered, like we seem to align on so many different values and things. And the way he handled the whole situation just seemed like so out of left field. And like looking back, like the signs of me, like wondering if he wasn't even interested, like I just, we could have handled it so much better. Like, I don't even know if it was really him not being interested or me just being insecure and reading too much into stuff. Nick's about to give you the best (laughs) advice that you need to hear. And then once he's done giving you the good (laughs) advice, I'm going to give you the fun advice that you don't need. (laughs) So when they go low, we go lower advice? The... Messy. You go first. You go first. Give her the proper advice that she needs right now because, yes, I, I, I already can, like, kind of feel where you're going to go. Okay, there's like, just a couple of things to consider. I think you said something like, he's either into me or wants to friend zone me. Like, at the, after you guys hooked up, you, you also, you've kept saying a couple of times, like, out of left field. Like, mm-hmm. it wasn't, really, right? So, very kind of typical, you know, hookup culture situation that you were in which is you went on a couple dates, you had a couple nice times, you had a little bit of sex. And then from that point on, things shifted. And maybe not mm-hmm. dramatically, but he basically kind of, you know, slow played him backing out. And, you know, there, I saw this, I think I've mentioned this a long time ago. I saw this pretty funny stand up about a guy who talked about, you know, guys and hookup culture. Guys don't know they just want to have sex with you and nothing more until they have sex and realize I'm good. I, I, I'm good. Part of that is a subject of hookup culture. As I've heard you, you've heard, probably heard me preach over and over. Like the sooner you have sex with someone without having a baseline of a connection or an emotional connection, the more they're going to focus on the sex and, you know, just put you in terms of how do I feel about sex with this person? Because despite having two or three good dates, you guys don't have much rapport or know much about each other. Right. And so, you're telling me, essentially, his behavior changed as soon as you guys had sex. Yeah, he reached out. Yeah, he liked a couple posts. But a lot of times, that's just men trying to make sure that you don't call him an asshole. You know? So it's like, well, I'll just keep hanging out. I'll keep checking in. Because, you know, you know guys don't want to be the, like, we hooked up and then I never heard from you again. So him reaching out to you is this allowing you not to say you had sex with me and then I never heard from you again. He's like, oh, we talked for a while. We hung out and I messaged you and yada, yada. Because to me, that's kind of what it sounds like. And this whole like, well, you reached out to him and then you, th- you were worried if he was confused, if he thought you were friend zoning him or vice versa. No, that's just you in your head. Like, listen, he, to me, like he just got in his head about I, I think he just lost interest after you guys hooked up, honestly. That's what it sounds like okay. to me. And it's not even a reflection of you. He doesn't really know you. You know, he just ended up having sex with you. And a lot of guys, once they have sex with someone and they don't know them, it just, they do lose some interest. And then they can get it back, but he then started probably internalize. you know, he probably started making excuses. Well, she does live far away. And then the awkwardness of you being like, we're not on the same page, but are we? He didn't really know. And then he probably just was like, ah. you know, he was responding to you just enough to avoid you calling him an asshole is my read on the situation. You know, he was just trying to save face and the liking of the comments and the you should try this place out was his version of being like, yeah, see, I'm not an asshole. You know, I can tell you where to go to go to get a good beer in my hometown. I, we're on, we're cool, right? That that's him making sure that you two were cool after he ghosted you. That's that's what that was. You know? I mean, that makes sense and it's like definitely a good perspective that yeah. I didn't think of. So 
like 99% certain that that was the it. man gives good advice. If he wanted, you know, and so yeah. <laughs> even out of boredom, if he wanted to see you again, he could have been like, oh, you should go here. Also, like, what are you doing tomorrow? Didn't do that. And so yeah. the question is like, no, in, in, in two years, can someone mature? <laughs> sure. Yeah, maybe. But you're also back to the original of, uh, version of like, he didn't really like you enough to, to keep hanging out with you. You know, listen, if you want to shoot your shot again, you can, but I would have the lowest of expectations. And if he is someone that you were, like you say, excited about, then I, you know, I, I, I do think, I think we need to have like a renaissance when it comes to hookup culture. I, I, again, I'm not here to shame people who want to hook up and fuck around, like hook up and fuck around. But I think if you're going to hook up and fuck around, you should do so uh, with the lowest expectations of building something emotionally. Because I do think, it's very confusing and it's easy to get in your head and it's, well, we had sex, but you know, this and this, and you know, people are so noncommittal these days. I think the more you can force people to get to know you without having sex on the table, the more certain you are, their willingness to actually get to know you and, and see if they're invested in you. So that's my two cents. Uh, Jojo. Okay. <laughs> Take his advice. But if you want to have some fun, it's been two years and you're still thinking about the man. Protect your feelings. Go into it. Know that it's, but text him. Just text him. You're going to feel so much better after you send the text. Just do it. Just could you send be a fuckboy? I guess the question is to her JoJo's point. Could you. Can turn, you like him Could you be the fuckboy in this situation? Could you detach yourself from. Could you have fun with this? And. If you're still thinking about him two years later. You're going to be thinking about him three years later. So you might as well just get the text out of the way or, or text him. Okay. You, you're, I've, I've never done this. Always wanted to text him, let him respond, see how you're feeling. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to text you wrong number. <laughs> just wrong number him or ghost his ass. He goes to your ass. You can text him and then not text him back. I don't hate that idea. So wait, you should think she should send him some obscure text. Like, Hey, just been thinking about you a lot recently. Hope you're doing well. Would love to see you soon. Let him respond. Then be like, oh shit, sorry, I didn't mean to send that to you. I meant to send that to my friend Jake. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. What if, okay, there's that option. What if she sends something less forward? Yeah, like what if it's like mo more What's it like accidental? a little more cryptic? Yeah, be like, what hey, if you're are like, you close? Yeah, like, I was going to say like, Hey, like we're meeting, meeting up this with tonight, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Be like, hey, does seven work? Oh, so sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was for Jake. <laughs> yeah. And no, you just, no, not Jake. It's just another, like, oh, I'm so sorry. I ax I'm, I'm hanging out with a guy with the same name as you. Like, you know, like the whole, that's kind of funny. It's just, it's, yeah. listen, if you, a bit manipulative. if you really want to be with this man and marry this man, and if you really do see a future, then take Nick's advice because we'll that's marry. that's the serious marry. advice. Yeah, you know. I'm a lesbian. Once we start dating, we're married tomorrow. <laughs> but like if you really, okay, so don't go to marriage. But if you do really like want to have a future with this dude and want to date him, then take Nick's advice because he doesn't sound like the best man. But if you're just around for some fun. You're going to your sister's town for the weekend. Just want to have a date. No shame in a date. No shame in a text. A text is a text. You can wrong number it. You can block him. You can ghost him after. You don't owe anyone anything. That's kind of like my thought is like, I'm going to be in town, not this coming weekend, but next weekend. So I'm like, if he was open to it, like it could just be a fun way to like go out and have a date or whatever. And I think like knowing what I know about him and like what happened, like I'm not going into it being super invested. And it's like, it's not like I have been sitting here for the last two years, like pining over him. Like it literally is just because I'm like, okay, like I saw his profile, like I saw him like drive by or whatever. Like I'm just kind of like have that lingering. Oh, what if question mark about that one? But like, if it doesn't work out, I'm just like, okay, at least I could know for sure. Okay. Well, here's like, an, here's also another idea. No bad idea in brainstorming. You know, just because I love your idea. It's fun, but you are <laughs> lying. So there's that. Because what if it works out? And it's True. this awkward story about like, so there's no Jake. Yeah. Roll this clip at the <laughs> wedding. Uh, but I don't, like when you said something earlier, you said, you got to get this out of your vocabulary if he's open to it. Like that energy you got to get that out of your vocabulary because I guarantee you, you're probably texting shit like that. 
if you're free, if you're available, whatever, you know, like this whole idea, I'm around when you're available energy, you got to stop that shit. So what if next time you're in town with your sister, you send them a, hey, totally random, but like, what are you up to? Like, I'm visiting my sister. I got, I literally have nothing. You say this to him. I, I have nothing better to do. So I figured I'd hit you up <laughs> and see what you're doing. Honestly, it's, it's a bit good. of a, like kind of a neg where you're kind of like, but then in his I, head, I uh-huh. have, I had nothing better to do. So I was just seeing what you're doing. I know you live here. Like, are you free? Keep it super casual. We love it. And kind of like put them down a little bit. It's just like, I'm so fucking bored. I had nothing better to do. So I figured what the hell I knew you lived around here. I figured I'd see if you wanted to grab a, like a drink and just keep it so like like what do you got to lose yeah but you're just bored as yeah, fuck the reason you're hang you're reaching out to him is because you literally it was like watch paint dry or hit him up and he's <laughs> like better that. than watching paint dry and that's that's okay. kind of like the that. energy you want to keep for a while even when you hang out with him you're just kind of like yeah i don't know and very nonchalant don't bring up the ghosting don't bring up the past you're super busy. You're hanging out with your sister. Like, I don't know. I was just fucking bored, you know? And then maybe if he brings it up, you could be like, yeah, I know you ghosted. Like, yeah, I mean, it wasn't cool. I just wouldn't get super invested in it. You could like tease him and be okay. like, yeah, it was, it's a weird thing to have done to someone, but like, whatever, you're over it. You're just more like chilling and then kind of see where it goes okay. and it let him uh, bring up the past or the future you're just there because you're bored and that's what you should tell okay. yourself. If you can do that and then maintain that energy with him, then I would say yes, but you really have to, it's not in your nature. You're obviously a sweet person. You're leading with your heart and you, you're probably considerate and thoughtful. And so that whole, like, you know, making sure he's okay with it and making sure you don't give a shit about him. You don't care if he's comfortable. You don't care if he's busy. You, you don't care. Are you available or not? I'm bored. What do you, what's up? You know, it could be you or a lump of clay. You know, it's just, (laughs) that's the energy you want to give them. No, I like it. I think that's like fitting for the situation. So when I send that, then like the day I'm in town, like not much notice. Yeah, no plan. You know, you're not reaching out in preparation. You know, you're not anticipating you're going to be bored. It's just more like, and then again, you know, you're running the risk that maybe he's out of town. He's not there. He's not available. But you are open up, you know, and, he, you know, if it, bu- hopefully it bugs him enough where he's like, oh, you don't hang out with me, you're bored. And you're just like, well, yeah, but like, hey, and then you could say, well, listen, obviously I'm here now and then maybe in the future if I'm bored again, you know, and then see if that opens uh, things up. You're but bad. <laughs> if, it, if it doesn't, but like, you, just, you have to be careful that you're not opening up, you're, you're not opening up a door for a fuck boy. Don't just do this once and then let him be the one who reaches out. And all of a sudden you realize that you're kind of waiting on him to reach out or wondering if he's going to reach out or shit like that. You got to maintain that. Like, this is a fuck boy who I'm only hanging out with because I'm bored because I got nothing to do, which is, there's a lot of truth into it. I'm guessing is part of the reason why you saw him and yeah, you're wondering and yeah, you had a good time two years ago, but he did fuck with you and he did ghost you. Yeah. And if you had a better thing to do, if you had a, n- a new fling in your life or someone else you were excited about, you would very quickly forget about this guy. So just remember that. So sure. you're, you're not even lying because a lot of this is coming from a place of boredom. You're just super single right now. You saw him and it's just like, eh, let's give the guy who already ghosted me a shot. And if you had anything else going on, you, you wouldn't would. be thinking about this guy. No, that's true. That's a very good point. So. I like your and you will have plenty it. of things going on. I'm not saying you have nothing better going on. You're just kind of in a slow season right now. You know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what okay, I Okay, I like it. Are I we in agreement? I'll take that yeah. Approach. Yeah. But just emphasis on like, oh my God, I'm so bored. Your town is so boring. What do you guys do here? Like, are you free? Because I got literally nothing better to do. And, and I mean, type, I have literally really nothing like better to do. Town. So I thought I'd hit you up. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like the smallest town. There really is nothing to do. So yeah. like that tracks if I were to reach out and say that. So I like it. All right. Oh, I'll keep us posted. I want to, I want to see if this works. <laughs> yeah. When are you going to go visit your sister? Uh, not this weekend, but next weekend. Perfect. All right. All right we'll follow up uh, in a week. Okay, Good luck. All Thank right. Best of luck. All right. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye. You really do give the best relationship advice. Thanks, Jojo. I don't know how you do it. A lots and lots of failure. Yeah. Truly, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. We've made all these mistakes. (laughs) Yeah.
done it all the wrong way. And I still get it wrong all, all the time, Man. you know, when I'm dealing with my own stuff. Pretty good now, though. Jojo. Nick. It's been just so good to see you again. It's been so good to see you. Is there anything else you want to get off your chest before I let you go? So much that we can't talk about yet, but right. when we can, I'll come back. All right. I can't wait. I can't wait to talk about you. And then we'll, we'll have dinner. You can, I'll give you whatever relationship advice. Oh, I'm so excited. Give me like a, what is it? What's the theme? Are we, is it love triangle? Is it, uh, someone likes you more than you like them the other way around? What is it? It is. I literally don't know. Okay. I will give you right. everything and okay. you can read it and tell me what it is. Oh, oh, read it. I have something I have to read. No, no. Interpret, read, read the situation. Yeah. Like I will okay. give you the whole picture okay and i i give you i'll give you a story that's very non-biased like okay. i will just tell you the story i don't need to favor me i don't need to favor her i don't need to favor the story i just tell you the story how it happened okay and you'll see what you make of it i'll cook dinner great all right you'll tell the story. sausage and onions and tomato sauce no okay. <laughs> God. oatmeal oatmeal and dates runny eggs <laughs> uh jojo please let my audience know where they can find you you can find me everywhere it's jojo c-y-i-t-s j-o-j-o-s-i-w-a pretty easy uh i love you you're amazing i got you uh, happy to call you a friend and um it was great talking you're with the you best. thanks for listening guys don't forget to send in those questions at ask nick at the uh if you have tuned in to listen to your uh favorite person jojo we are here every week three times a week we do a lot of relationship q a on mondays on our ask nick episodes on tuesday we talk a lot of pop culture reality tv and on thursdays like this episode we talk to some of your favorite uh personalities actors pr performers uh, everything under the sun so subscribe uh tune in we love you and don't forget to all you update lovers out there we have a new update special tomorrow dropping on vile files classic so don't forget to check that out tomorrow it's a juicy one crazy. bye Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.